Hello and welcome. Today we are taking a look at the Pakistani 84S clone magazines that were recently imported. These magazines are certainly interesting, but there are a few things we're gonna have to do. First off, we'll do some context, uh, then we'll talk about the particular examples that I got. And lastly, we'll talk about what I did in order to get this thing to work in my M85. Because uh, if you have a ZFAP 85, uh, bad news, it's not just gonna happen out of the box. So firstly, context. The original 84S was a Chinese 556AK that was developed for primarily, I believe, commercial export to the US in the like late 80s, early 90s era. Of course, in that time, there was no standard whatsoever for 556AKs. So the magazines are definitely proprietary to the rifles. However, they did develop uh, several different variations, including this particular one, which is the most interesting, obviously. Those original mags are floating around, but they're very expensive, and like I said, they're pretty proprietary to the 84S. So personally, I wouldn't modify one of those and try to, to try to make it work in something else. However, that brings us to these. These are from Pakistan. Khyber Pass region is known for its, shall we say, artisanal approach to gunsmithing. They basically do stuff in a garage. And I bought a extended capacity as well as a standard capacity magazine. They definitely had some 84S magazine examples that they were using when they made these, um, but they kind of look like somebody made them in a garage. So uh, the price I paid for them, definitely not worth it, but they were interesting and I wanted them. And uh, hey, look, it's it's, before, it's extended. Uh, this one, I, I'm calling it extended. The standard is, is 30, uh, but this particular one is about 37. I've seen someone else say they couldn't get more than 35 in theirs. Um, it's sold as a 40. I would, would honestly be kind of surprised if anyone could get 40 in there because even, you know, at, at 35, it's really tight. And I managed to get 37 in there, I think. So with that being said, of the two examples that I got, uh, there was definitely a difference between them. Um, it seems that there's a very much inconsistency between all the different examples that were brought in. The biggest thing that was a problem for me with the rear locking latch was definitely not consistent and not well defined. It was very rounded and it was not very deep. And that was the thing that I had to focus on the most to actually get it to work. The state that they were in, even if I had an 84S, I don't think that it would have fit because I do have a 10 round 84S mag. Funny enough, I found this in a, uh, a pile of junk at a gun show for like $20. Um, I haven't made a video on 84S magazines themselves, like original ones, because I want to get, uh, you know, standard capacity one first. But with this, uh, and you can see here, and you can also see in uh, photos of other 84S mags, the cut on the back of the locking lug is very well defined. It's pretty sharp, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty deep, and it was significantly better defined than the locking lug that arrived on both of my particular examples. I will say that the standard capacity one was the one that was much closer, um, but of course that's the one that's the least interesting. A few other things with the two examples that I received, uh, there's some, definitely some weird differences between them, like the bottom of the magazine spring that locks into the magazine floor plate. On the extended version, it was not blued, but it is blued on the standard capacity one. So I'm not sure if that's the same for all the extended ones or just something they missed on mine. I don't know. The bottom of the magazine where the floor plate locks into it, where it sort of folds over and the floor plate locks in, that is definitely <laughs> roughly shaped by someone using a hammer. So there's a fair amount of things to keep in mind. Should you be interested in these? Should we see them again in the future? Because I think all the original batches is sold out. Speaking of which, they sold them for too much. They were they're, they were not worth what they came into the country and were sold for. So if they do come back into the country, uh, they better be half the price that I paid for this because it's not worth it. So if we do see more of these in the future, I would think of them in terms of like basically an 80% mag, right? Um, it's going to require some work on your part in order to actually get it to work. But if you put in the work, then you can get an extended capacity metal magazine that you can get to work. So my goal was to roughly match the magazine that I had for reference and then see if that would work in one of my examples, which is what we did. So moving on to that, uh, I just took a Dremel and some hobby files and just kind of went at it, starting with just better defining the locking lug, you know, just flattening it off, trying to cut that groove a little bit deeper so that it wasn't just so rounded and instead was a bit more of a sharper angle where the two angles meet. And then I took, in this case, my M85, which of my ZPAPs is the one with the, uh, the most tolerance in the magwell. Um, so I figured this would be the easiest one to make it work, and that was the case. So with that, I used the original magazine for reference, 
you know, drum a little bit, file a little bit, test fit is the gun, repeat until I got it to work. And then just would hand cycle some rounds to make sure that it would actually cycle. And then yeah, that was that was pretty much it. Same thing with the extended magazine. Um, it had a much shorter tooth on the back of the lug there. So I was trying to be a bit more gingerly with that one because that was one that I definitely wanted to work and wanted to preserve. It's one of those things that because it's basically hand fit to the rifle, you kind of just have to sit down with it and just see if it fits. If it doesn't, take a little bit off the edge, take a little bit off the back, do it again. <laughs> and, and just uh, you know do that until it works so you can see here it didn't take too long a uh, bit of a process but not too bad and that's what they look like after modification still not perfect but the bridge is much more defined and they do lock in so we're happy with it after that I hit it with a little bit of cold blue just to cover up that bare steel and bring some color it is a wear spot so it's not gonna last forever but it is better than nothing and it took like five seconds with that being said, uh, I did get it to fit into my ZPAP M85 and then took it to the range and it worked perfectly, uh, flawlessly, uh, kind of surprisingly, but yeah, it was fine as you can see here. So it can be done. This requires a little bit of work. And there we go. Not bad. I don't take it. Moving on to fitment. Obviously, I basically made it to fit my M85 here, and it does fit that very well. Um, it fits, it works, it feeds. It could have been made to fit my M90, but that would require taking a bit more off than I really wanted to. And my M90 magwell is just a little bit tighter than my M85, so my M90 is one of those. I can get it to lock in, but then it gets a little bit stuck, um, and you kind of gotta pop it in, um, and I don't really want to do that. Um, I could have just taken a little bit more off, and then I'm sure it would have worked fine. But again, I was more so looking to match the original 84S. If nothing else, it can be done. And if you have an M90, go for it. You can make it work. Just might require a smidge more taken off. Lastly, the barrel. Whatever its shape was before I did the modification, it does actually fit the mag well, just barely. It just is super tight. Um, <sighs> It technically kind of sort of fits. I didn't test fire this particular configuration because if you do get it in there, you can very diff uh, if you do get it in there, it's very difficult to get out. And of course, the uh, 40 round certainly looks good. Uh, it's 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 a vibe. In my particular case, it doesn't lock in. So could it be done? Yeah, probably. If you only have a barrel and you really, 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 really just want to do this, then go for it. I didn't want to take it too much further, so I didn't keep going with that one. And since it doesn't lock in, I didn't test fire it. Anyway, that's the journey I took with my particular examples. Working in the ZPAP M85 was the main thing that I wanted to get done, and that did work surprisingly well. So if you embarked on a similar journey, let me know how it went for you, whether you went for an example like one of these or any of the other 556 AKs. But yeah, that is the tale of the Kyber Pass 84S clone mags. Um, at some point in the future, there will probably be a follow-up of some sort. Most certainly if I get an 84S, there will be. Otherwise, that's all I have for this one. Hopefully this was helpful, and I will see you next time. <sighs> Oh no. I just had a magazine fall off my lap and uh, land on my phone screen and destroy it. So, yay.